can I help you? Can I have some drumsticks? Yeah, sure. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Stone. I'm your photography and video production mentor at Studio NPL. I hope you'll join me on Tuesdays where we learn all types of video production and film techniques. Like this one. It's split screen. You'll see this in movies like The Parent Trap and The Nutty Professor with Eddie Murphy. There are a lot of other movies if you pay attention you'll notice they'll be doing this in-camera split screen technique. You can join me on Tuesday and learn how to do it. Are you ready to get going back there? I guess I better stop talking and get this going. Hey friends, this is Ashley from Studio NPL, and I'm here to show you a quick no-sew way to make a fabric face mask out of either a bandana or an old sock. Just make sure it's clean. For either method, you can use hair ties or rubber bands, or if you have leggings, you can cut a little ring of those off and it should work well. For the bandana, fold one half to the middle, make the other meet it, do one fold, one more fold. Now, we'll add our elastic bands. Just about a third of the way in. Like this. Fold in the ends, kind of tuck them inside, and there you go. For the sock method, go ahead and put your bands on first. You don't have to have a sock quite this long. This is just what I happen to have on hand. Put your bands about a third of the way in on this end and by the heel on that end. Next, tuck in the toe to the band. And flatten it out a little bit. There you go. Tacosaurus mask. There you go, you made your own face mask and you didn't even have to sew. So keep in mind, you're gonna wanna wash these after every wear and they also will not be quite as effective against filtering particles as like medical grade masks, but it's better than nothing and it will help keep you from touching your face. So everyone, wash your hands, stay safe and healthy and we'll see you soon. Yeah, yeah, check, yeah, what's asymmetrical up on your plane of life, dips and valleys on your way but you don't dip in height, make attitude match altitude and when you taking flights remember your royalty orbited by moonlight, brilliant stars and crescents call for love, stars fall when they shot but we still look above, Hoping that you win the battle and not catch a slug Find a ladder, throw it backwards to it's trapped in mud Cause bubble suds cannot wash away the bullet wounds I can't breathe, take a break, take a walk, take a moment's reprieve Save your life or save the game, don't bet it in a gamble Cause cops KO'd enough, leaving us in shambles We stained glass wearers, vanquished poison, spitting stanzas as the serum And you can't stop it seeping in the cerebellums This black boy been cleansing with Aquafina Reverse osmosis, it seems I haven't learned a Thing, Cause, Cause it's the potter's hands and his foot is on the wheel He fixed me, mold me, made me, told me painting with pain heals Use my life as a paintbrush making a portrait of yeah. the one who made us yeah. words from my creator I've sat on steps and wrote on pages, forgotten words and performed on stages Yeah. 
Shaking hands with the real and fake sin Spinning world, my location changes Sometimes I southwest, wanna get away in To and fro with the wind is my language I manage to shape shift a smoke screen And hide my inner damage Pack it all in a pen, bury it in a song The remote control of life has a broken pause I'm pen pals with my memories, yeah Something writing can't solve Deep sea diving in songs Making verses my reflection Ha <laughs> Cause it's the only time I try to right my wrongs, yeah Amazing grace, amaze I can't solve Amazing race I can't jog Carry life in Jan Sport Where I go, you go What I speak, you say So I find peace with a piece of your words Etch a sketch inside my head Cause now. it's the potter's hands And his foot is on the wheel He fixed me, mold me, made me Told me painting with pain heals Use my life as a paintbrush Making a portrait of the one who made us Words from my creator the potter's hands and his foot is on the wheel he fixed me mold me made me told me painting with pain heals use my life as a paintbrush making a portrait of the one who made us words from my creator hey guys it's music mentor Rhett, um, right now we're going to talk about song structure <clears throat> because there's so many options that you can you can follow when you're making up a song. You can stay on one chord the whole time, and maybe slide up to another chord, but really stay on that one. You can do that. Um, a lot of times, especially in Nashville, what you're going to find is the one four five progression, and by that. I mean the G, C, D. See, in a um, long time ago, studio musicians developed this system to where when artists came in to record their songs, they could do it as quickly as possible and get you know more money off of more songs recording. Now, that number system um, just assigns every, every chord in a key the same number. It's much like the capo does to the guitar. When I move the capo here, this becomes the one automatically. Um, ma, for what we're talking about, for all intents and purposes. So, in the key of G, the one is the G. The two is the A. I'm playing A minor. That's A major. The three is the B. That's B minor. A major. The four is the C, five is the D, the six is the E, there's E major, just so you know what it sounds like, and the seven is the F. And the ones that I play minor, that's because in a normal major scale, that would be the chord that you would probably use. It's the most useful to go somewhere else, like for instance. Now that could sound like a verse, but in the, in the interest of song structure, that could be a verse. It is many verses. Well, from there you could go down to the sixth chord, and that could be your pre-chorus or even a bridge or a chorus. So if we were doing something like you go. So say that was a, a pre-chorus, the chorus could sound something like <laughs> Really what I did for this chorus was use the verse and the pre-chorus mixed together. It wasn't anything really different. I was just taking elements of what I've already played in the song and trying to mix it up a little bit, but I didn't even really mix. I just combined two different things I'd already done. But remember, you've got... You have all those chords and many more to work with, but those are your, your, your main chords, the cowboy chords. And don't forget, 
if you grow tired of playing in that key of G, just put it anywhere. Go one, two, three. I know you can argue that it just sounds the same in a different key because you're doing the same exact things. This is very true, but they are different frequencies, um, so that can be inspiring and lead to you playing differently. So work work with that. Enjoy it. It's just something to be had fun with. And uh, song structure, like I said, you can your strong your song structure can be one chord, or it can be all seven, or it can be three. Um, and I'll do more more examples of that in a video. So enjoy the song structure and make your own. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. I'm just taking some pictures of some wildlife. Do you know I'm glad you stopped by. I want to let you know that Studio NPL Mentors, we're working really hard right now to get some videos out for you to be able to watch, learn some new skills, and give you something to do while you're stuck at home. We're all working from home ourselves right now, doing our social distancing, and I know you are too, so hopefully you can learn a new skill during this time. It's a great opportunity to learn something different. And I was also thinking, I know a lot of you have something that you're really good at, that you love to do, and maybe you could take a minute, make your own video, send it to me, I'll post it up, and we can learn something new from you, whatever that new skill might be. Maybe it's how to apply makeup, maybe it's cooking, maybe it's building a robot. It could be anything. Just put it together, put a little quick video together, and send it to studionplnashville at gmail.com. That's studionplnashville at gmail.com, and I'll go ahead and post it for everyone to learn your new skill. I look forward to seeing your videos. Oh, I'm going to grab this bird over here. I'll see you next time. Video production at Studio NPL. Learn how to capture, edit, and create your own videos. Part of the Studio NPL Teen Workshop Series. Where have you been? I don't know. My room. I saw your new video. I really liked it. Don't mention it. No, really, I really liked it. Did you did you see this one comment? Sam, they're just trolls. Don't even worry about it. I'll never be as good as Zorm. His videos are the best. They're so good. Sam, get off your phone. Couldn't help me unpack. I need an extra hand with your mom on his home. And clean up this room. all this equipment and you can borrow it and shoot some new videos for my channel I don't know if that's a good idea it's not stealing not if we get caught it's the only way my videos will be as good as Zorm's fine I'm in
have a really good feeling about this. Yeah. Hey guys, I got a Papa Merlin's pizza. You want to come watch it? Hey, is that my camera? It is. I, uh, I, Alex, would you excuse us? Yeah. I told you not to go into my office. I needed it for my video. Okay. You are grounded until your mother gets home. What? That's so unfair. It was worth it. My video's gonna be the best. You will not believe. What is this? Sam, let me explain. You're Zorn. It's complicated. You're the Zorn. How could you lie to me? That that's. Hey Sam, what's up? So you were a film director. How'd you find out? Alex told me. <laughs> Why'd you stop directing? My first movie went pretty well. I mean, it was a blockbuster. I, I guess I got worried they couldn't do it again, so I quit. From what I saw, it was, it was really good. Like, <laughs> it, it was so good. <laughs> You did a great job. You see, I really want to make a video. And I think maybe you and I can work together. Or, you know. Let's do it. Hey. Hey. I'm sorry about the other day. Like, I, I shouldn't have yelled and no. I just. Well, I'm I, sorry, I lied to you. And I didn't want you to treat me any differently. And. I, I never wanted to hurt your feelings. I understand, but I just really wish you would have told me. Hey, uh, me and my me and my stepdad, we just made this new video. Uh, oh, really? Wanna, yeah. It's, it's trending. trending.
But I can move and be hard to get. <laughs> Still okay. not working. <laughs> Hot. Wait, my stepdad has all this professional equipment locked away for some reason. Wow. Your head is just this small. Okay. There's 30 frames in a second. Hecky stop. Don't worry about it. Filming. <laughs> My name is Chris, and I'm a mentor through National Public Library Studio, MPL, and I'm here today to talk about our Visualizer Workshop. 
Now visualize is an effect that you create in After Effects that reacts to your audio files. Visualizers are great for promoting your music on Instagram or any other social media you might use. Now, as you can see here, I've created my own visualizer that reacts with my voice in this video. So if you're interested in making a visualizer or any kind of video production, please come join us at the main library between 2 and 6 on Tuesdays where we hold our own video production workshop. Sound, especially in film, is almost like a person. It maintains a beauty while conveying intense emotion. It is powerful. It can lie or tell the truth. It can take us on a journey to a faraway place or take us home. My favorite thing about music is that it can capture um, emotions and colors that I can't necessarily capture through words. Um, maybe I can't, like there's no way to translate a major chord or a minor chord into something on screen. It's just not something that can translate. So for me, um, music adds an extra, um, it adds an extra tool to my toolbox. And it's something else that I can use to contribute to the emotion of my film and to further the storytelling. For me, in films where there is no music, you're missing a key emotional element. Uh, I'm used to hearing music in a film, and when that music is taken away from me, I'm disoriented. I don't necessarily know where to look for the emotional cues about how I should be feeling in a specific moment in that film. So I think in all films, and especially in the horror genre, um, music is used to add suspense to the film. So especially if you're trying to add like to a dramatic moment, you don't know who's going to walk out of that door. You might have like strings, maybe some cacophony, and you're like, ah, what's going on? I also am a bit of like a superhero film nerd, and for me, music is also really important in action films because it really, it adds, like the timpanis will add drama to like, you know, a fight scene if you have this dum, dum in the bass. Um, or, you know, especially in moments where you're going from like really large cinematic set pieces to smaller emotional moments. In action films, really the music helps cue what emotion I should be feeling in a specific scene. You know, I go from terror in one scene to a sweet moment in the next. Music really helps make that transition more fluid within the film. Foley art is supplemental sound design in video editing. The, one of the most classic examples would be something like uh, a lightsaber. Um, that was purely a Foley sound. I, I forget exactly where they got the sound from, but you know, it's so iconic just the sound of a lightsaber turning on and so we associate that sound with a lightsaber without even seeing the lightsaber. So it really, um, it really does play off of what we expect to hear. So I mean, if you, the, the most obvious example would be a fight scene. You know, when you see the guys hitting each other, you hear really over the top <laughs> sounds. And if you've ever seen a fight, it's never, you know, sounding like that. So it's just additional sound to spice up a piece of footage. It's, it's one of those things, if you didn't have it, you would you'd really notice it. And it, especially depending on certain genres like action movies, if they didn't have Foley, it would, it, you would notice a very big difference in how the, the fight scenes or explosions are perceived. Uh, Foley can be really, really minor stuff. It could be footsteps, it could be somebody breathing, it could be, um, you know, a doorbell. There are a lot of things that after you have done a little bit of folio work, you'll see in movies and you'll know, oh yeah, they, they definitely just threw in an audio clip of that sound. Foley is a, an audio special effect. That's, at the end of the day, that's what it's really doing. Sound is one of the main senses that you don't have control over, so you can't, actively choose, I'm not going to hear anything. So it's always impacting how we see and how we perceive the world. So what do I do to create an environment? What I do is I like to think of what the natural sounds in a space are like, and then I like to make sure that they're prevalent in what I'm creating, especially if I'm trying to create a specific mood. 
So for a track on one of my projects, I had one of my buddies spitting a spoken word piece and I wanted to sound like he was standing in the middle of Central Park. So the challenge is he recorded it in my studio, which is dead. It's though it's meant to be as, you know, um, clean as possible. And so it was fun, like I went around the internet and you know, like I was saying, like I found some sounds of like birds chirping, then I found some sounds of people talking, I found some sounds of cars driving by, cars honking, and like a little tugboat in the background doing its horn to kind of um, mimic a fairy. And then gently blended these things in. So you feel that the world is still moving around him. And so with that, I think it's important to make sure that when you're creating something digitally, a lot of times you have to digitally create the world as well. And so it can change, you know, if you're walking through the park, there's different sounds that can be used to make that experience feel pleasant or to make you feel scared and to be looking over your shoulder all the time. And so um, you kind of become the maestro of that with the sound selection. Sound is everywhere. Again. I'm so glad you could join me while I'm out exercising and doing my social distancing at the same time. I wanted to thank you for sending your videos in, those great little workshops you're doing, those how-to videos. They've been awesome. Let's check out Audrey. She goes to Hume Fog. She sent us a really cool one. Take it away, Audrey. Okay guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to paint these cute little sunset rocks with just paint from your dollar store and a couple rocks that you find outside. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is find some nice smooth rocks outdoors that will be easy to paint. So then you're going to need yourself some paint. It can vary depending on how you want your sunset to look, but what I used was some white, orange, yellow, a nice light green, sky blue, and some black. And then of course you're going to want yourself some paintbrushes. You can make do with just the thin one, but I also like to use a thicker one to speed some parts along. And you're going to want some water to clean up your brushes in between each color. So before you can get to any of the fun parts, you have to get yourself a nice clean background that you're not worried about getting anything on. You can use newspapers, just some regular copy paper, but layer it up. Or you can do what I use, which is to use an old piece of cardboard. You're also going to need something to put your paint on and mix your paint on to get all the right colors. Now, before we get started with the actual fun part of the painting, you want to give yourself a clean canvas. So you're going to take your white paint and you're going to get your thickest brush. And then you're going to dip that brush in the white paint so after you've given it a few layers and let it dry, the finished product should look something like this. Nice and even, nice, nice and clean. Gives you a completely finished and even canvas. The next thing you have to do is start with your sunset. The first color you're going to take is your yellow to go around the base of the rock. So just get some on your paper plate or piece of cardboard, dip your thinner brush into it, and go to town. I'm going to start at the bottom part of your rock and work up. That can dry. What you want to do is get your orange so you can put them together and do 
orange layer in the middle. Then what you want to do is you want to grab your glue. And then, you can then brush it with glue. You go to town the top. You may have to wash your brush off at this point because you don't want them to blend completely and you want some cold glue. The finished sky should look something like this with some nice yellow at the base fading up to a nice light blue at the top. Now you're going to want to let that dry so you can do your layers of pills. Wash off your brush and get your green. Now, with hills, the way you make your strokes does matter because you want to go in nice, smooth, flowing curves. I like to start out with the middle hill and just go shoop. Just do a nice semicircle, not too round though. It may look strange just a random hill right in the center, but we're going to add two more on the sides to make it look nice and natural. And you might have to do layers on the green in order to make it stand out and that you don't see the sunset through them. Now, I like to go ahead and add the hills on the side. you've got the three bumps, you're going to want to take your black so you can do a little bit of shading and make those hills really definitive so they don't just look like three lumps that are all put together. So you take that black and add a tiny bit of it to your green. Now, in the lower corners, of uh, the hill in the very back. You're going to want to take that darker green and where the two front hills in the front end, you are going to draw a line that you will then blend out. And now, this hill is basically entirely dark. So what I'm going to do is add back in some light green in the center and just blend it out so you just have nice shadows in the very corners. There you go, you got three 
little house. I also like to add a little bit of that darker green that you made into the corners of the other hill. So it's like the sun's hitting them. So it's like the sun's hitting the tops and then fading out. And then you want to blend that dark green that you just added out onto the rest of the hill. And again, you may have to add a few more layers of that light green to make sure that sunset is not Once you've done a few more layers and cleaned up those shading and the edges, your hills should start looking something like this. Now you may see I have a little bit of a, a bumpy, uneven edge right there, but we're going to go back with the yellow and smooth that out and also make it look like the sun shining out from right behind the hills. What you're going to do is take the yellow that should be already on your tray, don't be afraid to squeeze more if you need it, and then take that yellow your skinny brush after washing the green out of it. You are going to get in the very edges of the hills and trace them into them. Trace the line in between them and the sky. You may have to add some more oranges and kind of remake your sky without making sure it's all together. So I'm going to go back with a little bit of orange and maybe even a little bit of blue and just blend it all out. It may help to get your brush wet a little bit so they blend better in their, in their colors. Now that you've let your hills and sky dry, it should now resemble something like that. See with the nice yellow glowing on, over the hills and the orange and blue fading out nicely. The next part, the next step, is to do your clouds. So you're gonna take some more of that white, nice shiny white, And what you're going to do is get your thin brush let you get, get your thin brush wash it off again you are going to want to dry this one off a little bit too so i like to grab some paper towels just to make sure it's nice and clean especially when working with white and then you're going to do your clouds you're going to get some white on the very tip of your brush and you're going to start dabbing. You dab to give them to give your clouds more of a fluffy texture instead of swirly thick swipes. Clouds don't just stand alone, so you're going to want to layer up your clouds and get some behind others. So what I would then do is a larger cloud behind that first cloud. And 
then have it just fade out into sky to show that it's two different clouds and not just one massive cloud. So you want to leave some separation in between the two clouds. going to add a third cloud on the other side of the rock. Higher or lower, it depends on how you feel, but I'm going to do mine lower. just three clouds though because my rock is so small but if you have a larger rock you can do more hills more clouds and more colors on your sky but i like to keep my sky very simple and cute yeah. what i did with these clouds which i didn't say i was going to do was add yellow to the very base to make it look like the sun was reflecting off the base of the clouds and then shining on them now, while I only showed you one way to paint rocks, you can paint them however you want. You can do little galaxies, little monsters, and even little caterpillars. I find this caterpillar with the giant googly eyes very cute. And you can get creative. You can add puppy paint, googly eyes, buttons, whatever you want. Again, as long as it just makes you happy. That was really cool, Audrey. Thank you so much for sending us that video. I never thought about painting rocks like that. I'm gonna try that tonight. I hope some of you will too. So remember, if you have a really neat skill that you can do, feel free to make a video and send it to me at studionplnashville at gmail.com. That's studionplnashville at gmail.com. Keep those videos coming. Trying to pick up on a scent that may be around there somewhere And I'll be a better woman, I'm sure When I don't love you no more Ain't nothing like reaching, nothing like reaching out For the memory of a man
Hi, I'm Seth and I'm a mentor at Studio NPL. This is the first video I'll be making in a series about how to make your own podcast. Listening to podcasts is a great and useful way to spend the time that many of us have at home now, but making them is also a creative and fun way to use it because you're getting to make your own news broadcast, fictional radio play, or just a talk show with your friends. And making them now is easier than ever using a lot of free tools that are online or household objects. So in this video, I'll be going through kind of different recording tools and editing tools that are either free to access online or that use things that you might have access to in your house. In this video, I'll cover three main aspects of podcast equipment or podcast software that you need to in order to make one. Uh, the first being a microphone. If you're watching this on a cell phone, then that has a microphone built into it. And a lot of cell phones actually have uh, built-in voice memo or voice recording applications. Laptops, a lot of them come with microphones too and they also have recording applications on there. Um, my cell phone also came with some earbuds that have an inline microphone built into them, built right in the wire. Um, a lot of modern earbuds have either inline microphones like these or they'll have microphones installed directly into the earpieces. So those are more common microphones you might have around your house uh, instead of maybe an explicit music or podcasting microphone. So by plugging these into a phone or a computer or using the onboard microphones on those devices, you're able to start recording. These microphones I'll just mention may not give you the same quality of sound as a professional kind of studio podcasting microphone, but there's some ways to get the most sound and most quality out of these ones. Uh, one way is to remove as much excess noise in your recording environment as possible. So you could either maybe go outside at night or in the middle of the day when it's quieter if you have access to a backyard. Another way is to kind of turn your closet into a makeshift recording studio. And that lets a lot of those extra clothes in the closet dampen a lot of the sound uh, that's either coming in or echoing off the walls. Another way to kind of get better quality out of your microphone is to make a fake windscreen or pop filter. Uh, which is what this is. Essentially what a pop filter and windscreen does is that it diffuses a lot of the air going into the microphone because air going directly in kind of distorts the sound a little bit. Um, so what you can do is cover your microphone maybe in some thin cloth, whether that is a clean sock, a sheet, or a pillowcase, and that'll help kind of diffuse any air from shooting straight to the microphone and distorting whatever it picks up. Another way to get the best quality recording is to set whatever your recording device is on a surface that you're not gonna bump that much because bumping whatever it's resting on can also kind of distort some of that microphone pickup. All right, so now that I've talked a bit about microphones and recording software, uh, I figured I could show you some editing software. Uh, so right now, what I've opened is Audacity, uh, which is a free editing software you can use on Mac and Windows. Um, on Mac, there's also GarageBand is Apple's free audio recording and editing software you can use, but I'm not going to use that just because uh, it's not available on all platforms. Uh, there's some other free ones you can use online and everything, but Audacity is also a great one because there's a big community of podcasters that have all used this for a long time, and they have plenty of you know frequently asked questions and tutorials on all kinds of different aspects for it. Um, so right here I just have a podcast that I made earlier, very simple, it's only about 16 seconds, uh, and you know, it's just an intro, I said um in the middle of it, which is right here, um, and then, you know, a little bit at the end. So two main edits you're going to be making in Audacity, uh, very frequently. One is, uh, listening to the clip and hearing what the room tone sounds like, uh, so if I start this from the beginning. You'll notice there's a bit of like a hum. Hello, this is Seth uh, from what I assume is air conditioning. Uh, and then there's a an um in the middle of it. So something you may notice when you start recording is how much you vocalize to fill empty space like that. So I'll show you how to fix both of these very quickly. You're gonna be using these a good bit. Um, so the first thing I'm doing is I'm actually up here. I'm using the selection tool, which looks kind of like a little writing cursor. Um, I'm gonna click and highlight the um right here uh, and I'm just going to delete that and you'll notice that the two sides on uh, both ends of the highlight snap together and it creates kind of this seamless transition right here where the um used to be in the middle. One other thing for you to do is this first like five seconds where there's kind of that room tone. Uh, you want to actually record and leave that empty space in the beginning so that you can go and isolate the room tone and then eliminate it from the rest of the clip. So. Uh, this five second clip, if you listen to it, you hear kind of that air conditioning hum. 
what you can do is go to the effects panel um, on PC it's going to be up at the top bar as well um, you want to go to noise reduction and then at, you want to have the section of the clip highlighted and then click get noise profile so it analyzes that clip that you selected um, and now you want to highlight the area where you want that entire noise profile removed from now that you've selected it so I want the whole clip right here to be selected so I just click this little side panel now I go back to the effects panel and noise reduction and then I click OK so now it analyzed the whole clip and you can go and listen to it and you'll notice that it's a lot Hello, quieter. This is Seth. I guess and this it is kind just of AC. removes it from the rest of the entire clip. Um, so those are the two main edits that you're going to be making in Audacity whenever you're doing a podcast. One other edit is you can remove this first little bit now that you've used that. Um, and also you can add theme music to your to your video. So I went on Free Music Archive. Uh, it's a great place to get royalty free music and I grabbed a song that I'm going to be crediting at the end of this video so I'm going to add that in here and you can see kind of you know where it falls with the rest of the clip so I'm going to take the time shift tool and I'm going to grab this time I'm going to move it toward the end so that now you can listen to the podcast get to the end of the podcast and then the song comes in at the end I guess this is just a sample podcast that's about it for this episode. I'm going to be talking in future episodes again about publishing and another one about kind of recording one with your friends over long distance technologies like video chat and how to make a multi-person podcast that way. So thanks for tuning in.